Hey everybody, it's the Waiting for Next Year.com podcast, and we are talking movies with our old friend Brian Spath. How's it going, man? Good. How are you? Good. I'm this is a chance occurrence that we get to sit down and talk right after Captain Marvel comes out. So. I know. Just and you just mentioned days ago. that you wanted to talk about it. Yeah, always. I'll always talk about a, a Marvel cinematic universe movie. Yeah, well, and honestly, this time of year there's no sports to really talk about anyway. Um, unless you're really into NFL free agency. I um, hate the NFL draft. Do you know that? And the lead up to March Madness. And, I, I'm not interested no. Why in that. do you hate the NFL draft? I just think it's so overblown and just overtalked and just overdone. Okay. I thought maybe you had like some larger philosophical, moral issue with it. Or... Well, I mean, I do with the NFL as a whole. But, <laughs> right. <Fair enough. laughs> but no, I just think the draft, it's like so boring and like. You, I've no, I'm sure somebody with how much content is out there has done like some kind of analysis over like projections of how these guys were going to do based on what people were saying in the combine and all these other things versus how they actually performed. Yes, and I'm sure it has like a maybe a 50 percent hit rate. Yeah, um, as draft picks do. So, so let's segue into movies because okay, because honestly, no, it's it's interesting that you bring that up because. I don't have any idea what the expectation level was for Captain Marvel. I Mm -hmm. don't know how much the box office was expected to be or how it performed. I haven't even looked to see, like, what the critics thought, but I did see the movie myself. Okay. All right. Well, where would you like to start, then? So. Because I know all of those things. Let's (laughs) let's start with kind of the the critics and, and, you know, Marvel's coming off a year between Infinity War and Black Panther where... They probably never achieved a higher peak in terms of critical acclaim, even though you could make the argument for some of the Captain America movies being better or mm-hmm. whatever. Mm-hmm. Um, and box office, by the it, way. Okay. Both, yeah, both those movies were critically acclaimed and like their highest grossing. So like, yeah, it was quite a year. Black Panther and Infinity War. Yeah. Yeah. That, what did they, I say? No, no, oh, you okay. did. I just made sure because then I mentioned Captain America. Right, 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 right. Those movies were crazy, yeah. crazy... Um, box office yeah successful very successful so obviously it's going to be hard for them to duplicate that with every single movie especially Mm -hmm. when they're introducing a character right and and it's week one we don't know what the long tail is going to be on on captain marvel right but did it like do really well this weekend yeah it made a 154 million dollars and 450 worldwide okay so it's got a shot it's got a pretty healthy shot at a billion dollars which would make it a massive, massive, massive hit. So yeah. All right. <laughs> and and in ter- I sometimes you skip all the critical stuff, mm-hmm. all the pre. I do movie hype. Did you skip all of it this yeah. time too? Yeah, I had knew I had watched the trailers and that's it. Okay. I, I knew nothing. And only when they were forced upon you in the theater, probably. Right. Exactly. Well, I always, when it comes out online, I'll always watch it once, and then I'm like, all right, I'm good. I have a good cry over it usually, and then I <laughs> and I did. I cried at this one. My wife's like, "What is wrong with you?" And I'm like, "I I just love this stuff. I can't yeah. help it." <laughs> so your expectation level for Captain Marvel was? Um, I would say a, a if on a scale of one to ten, probably a, a nine, because I'm always. The Marvel brand at this point for me is like it basically can't miss because I, I almost don't <clears throat> judge these movies. I, I, it, they're all like it's like Marvel Part Twenty Three, you know? Sure. Or Twenty. I think there's be Marvel Part Twenty One at this point. It's just like this ongoing story for me. Um, even though like something like Captain Marvel totally stands on its own, um, it's you know it is part of this. The, the way they've situated their brand. And the tone of their movies, and even though they're tonally can be different, how it all fits together and feels like a part of this whole, it really is how they used to do the comics in the 80s and 90s when I was growing up on them. So, um, yeah, I'm just like, I, all of these, I don't care. They could do uh, Toaster Man, and I'd be like, I'm in. That's, I'll be there. Is Toaster Man a real one? No. Does that ex- actually No, exist? but on Ren and Stimpy the, the, from the 90s, there was a, a, a superhero called Powdered Toast Man. Because... Marvel, the actual comic books, have had some some real weird ones that might or might never make it. Well, frankly, I mean, Guardians of the Galaxy, they have Groot and Rocket, Raccoon. I yeah. mean, that's about as weird as you get, right? So, Right. 
weird and maybe didn't work enough right. to convert. Into, right. It's, it's really interesting because I'm, I'm one of those non-readers, so mm-hmm. I knew nothing about Captain Marvel. Mm-hmm. Well, she has an interesting his- history. She, she's been through a lot of uh, different versions, both the Carol Danvers character and the, the name Captain Marvel. Would you like to hear about that? I, I guess a little bit. I'd like to focus on the movie itself. <laughs> okay. All right. We can start there then. So in terms of translating your childhood comic book reading mm-hmm. to the screen, how satisfied were you with what, what ended up happening? Well, what they ended up producing. I, Brie I, Larson. I, I, was, I was very satisfied. I would probably rate this a, a high 7 out of 10, which is right there with all of the Marvel introductory movies. It felt very much like Doctor Strange, Ant-Man, uh, the first Captain America. is Thor. Very, yeah, the first Thor. Very kind of smaller scale, self-contained. And also, like, the... You can tell the actor is is still trying to really like. You can tell like, look, she was consistent. She gave a great performance, but you you can tell just like with with Chris Hemsworth and Thor, like where he really found Thor maybe a couple movies later. Yeah, um, I think it was the first Avengers movie. Yeah, that's where, where he, he really, really found Thor. Yeah, and same thing with Captain America. Same thing with Ant Man has pretty, been pretty consistent from the start. But um, but yeah, it felt very much like like. You know, Doctor Strange, like, oh, yeah, okay, that was really good. I really enjoyed it. I can't wait to see how he interacts with the rest of the Marvel Universe and to see what his next movie is like. Mm-hmm. You know, so it's always that kind of let's get the origin out of the way and, and yeah. then go do stuff. So that that's where it, it fell for me. As far as, like, how it related to my comic reading, so this version of Carol Danvers as Captain Marvel has actually only been around since 2012. Okay. So it actually falls outside my range of when I was reading comics. She was known as Ms. Marvel when I was reading. So um, same powers, same gist of everything, but she was d- different uniform and different name. So I never really knew her as Captain Marvel. Interesting. But other than that, um, very consistent with... And so when they did those comics in 2012, was she born in the 90s? Kind of the way... This played out in the movies, or did no? Did that did they do that to fit whatever timeline they've got in the cinematic universe? The, right the, now? the latter, the okay. latter. So the way the comics, I thought that worked. I felt like the '90s were a character. Yeah, and some people I read now that some people thought maybe it was a little bit over the top or a little bit too on the nose, but like I thought it was fine. It was all female '90s alt rockers. Yeah. I thought um, all that stuff worked great. The, so the way the comics work, plus the nine inch nail shirt. Yes, yeah. yes. Um, the way the comics work is basically like it, the Marvel Universe kind of set a rule. I think they call it the seven-year rule or the ten-year rule. And the the Fantastic Four is kind of recognized in the comics as like the start of the Marvel Universe. They were the first heroes, their first everything. And the way the comics work is that was always seven to ten years ago. Okay. So like, you know, because obviously you can't have the Fantastic Four. Like their their origin was they were trying to be the first ones to the moon. So, like, you okay. can't really keep that and have them not be, like, 90 years old. <clears throat> so, like, you know, it always kind of is this sliding scale of when the Fantastic Four... So, I, I don't know what it is in the comics now, but it was probably something like they were trying to, you know, whatever, go to Mars. Who knows what they were trying to... I don't know. So, um, at some point, her origin was in the 90s, yeah. But now okay. it would be whatever in the recent past. Interesting. So, um, but, yeah, this was very much for the, the Marvel Universe um, timeline. So, I thought this one... Um, I thought it was good. I didn't think it was great. Mm -hmm. But I also left myself room because it was a new character for me and because I didn't know much about what was the the world that she was going to inhabit or the different factions. Um, I've left room for me, for myself to like like it a lot more in the second viewing. Um, But then again, it's not, wasn't so good... Like, when I saw Black Panther, I kind of knew I was going to see it a second time, mm-hmm. maybe a third time. Mm-hmm. The first Ant-Man I loved, mm-hmm. but I didn't really have to, like, sit down and watch it mm-hmm. again. I knew that Ragnarok I was going to watch multiple times. Right. So this one didn't give me that feel like some of the other ones where I know I'm going to have to watch it two, mm-hmm. three, four times. Yeah, I, I would feel the same. Um, <clears throat> the one thing that I thought felt a little bit short in this, and I don't know if it's because these directors haven't really done action before, but I thought the action was a little bit... Um, the geography of it wasn't perfect. 
it was especially like that whole I felt like that whole train car chase sequence should have been more it, tense. It could have been any movie. That, by the way. Yeah, yeah. I felt like it was like this, this should be more interesting than it is. Like um, re- remember when Will Smith did Wild Wild West mm-hmm. and then Kevin Smith told the story later about how the producer of that movie always wanted the giant mechanical yes, robot spider. Yes, yes. It was like somebody decided they some producer was like, I want I want a train. Yeah. I yeah. want a train. We're gonna have a fight on a train. We're gonna use her powers on a train. Yeah. Because of a train. Yeah. A train, train, train. <laughs> yeah. And so we ended up with the scene with the train. Yeah, yeah. So um that it did I don't know if it felt that no you know but but yeah it felt like in it the marvel cinematic universe doesn't allow that kind of thing but yeah, that's the way it, it kind it, of felt it, yeah it, it just felt like it should have been more interesting more tense more i wasn't really sure how the car related to where the train was yeah. um and 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 similar i mean even in the end um that whole thing in space i felt like that should have felt more tense i i don't know but um it's it wasn't look it was i really liked it that that's my one criticism basically um wait i had one other criticism oh my other criticism while i and this relates to the action though while i love the use of uh the no doubt song it didn't sync up to the action as the crescendo of the song hit at the wrong part for me i'm like this this, the outburst moment in the action came before the outburst moment in the song and like it, it felt like a real misfire at that point. And of all the songs that they played, that one was really on the nose. That did feel on the nose, and but I felt it would have worked better if it had been fair enough synced right. Fair enough, because um, like that, obviously that that use of pop music worked brilliantly in the Guardians movies, and yes. even even in Thor Ragnarok um, with the Led Zeppelin song. Well, I told you that that song became my six year old's favorite song. Yeah, and there's no reason in the world why. Like I, I never even grew up loving classic rock it was right, classic right. rock in my day right 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 and now all of a sudden he's like yeah 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 um, dun, 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 i mean it worked dun, dun, perfect in yeah. that so um but other than that i thought the use of the music was good i thought the 90s stuff was good the, it, they, there could have been a zillion cheap 90s jokes and yes. even the one about the internet worked in the moment yes. it wasn't like it, that is what would happen in that moment i love so the, like i love the stanley nod to mall rats yeah that was good too i love yeah. that so much yeah did that? Did, did they actually have that footage, or did Stan Lee pass before? No, they had it, and okay. they have apparently two more from him. They Great. did. I think they they knew they better stock some up um, <laughs> because he was, you know, he's ninety five, and I think I he was getting weak. So they like basically brought him in one day to do like six of them. I think like two years ago. So, um, so yeah, they have a couple more. Okay. Oh, but man, that the, the opening what they did to the Marvel logo. Oh, yeah. I was like sitting. I'm just sitting there crying before the movie starts. It was like. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so for those who haven't seen it, it's not a spoiler, but yeah, Stan Lee takes over the Marvel logo and at the the pre before the movie starts and and then just says thank you Stan. Yeah. It's um, so good. You no, know, it was great. Yeah. It was great. I didn't cr- I didn't full out cry. I did. But once I was, you once I realized what was happening, I was, I was like, choking oh, up no. a little bit. Yeah, it was great. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um so overall I thought it was good. It everything feels like is just so, kind of a time filler until we get to the final little bit yeah. Avengers movie. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, but this obviously pay, plays such a key role. And again, I'm not spoiling anything. I don't think when I say that, like we've always known that Captain Marvel was going to play a really key role yeah, in the yeah, final yeah. Avengers movie. Yeah, yeah. And so now you know we've seen the the lead up, and now all the all that's left is the final Avengers. Movie. Yeah, it'll be it'll be interesting um, because she is like so powerful. It's like, what is the use of the rest of the event, of the Avengers at this point? It's kind of like the Superman thing. Where yeah. It's like, what, what do you need? What do you need any of the rest of them for? <laughs> right. The Batman versus Superman thing. Right. 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 Okay. Um. I mean, I was talking to my wife about this, and like, it's like Thor could maybe like hold up against Captain Marvel for a little while, but like, I don't even think Thor can like take her out. Like, yeah. she's so powerful. Although I've always felt like Thor should have been the most powerful of any of them by a long shot. Oh, anyway. yeah, for sure. But, like, what's Iron Man going to do against her? Nothing. 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 Well, so this is and this is the last thing I wanted to talk about because this is something that occurred to me um, or has occurred to me over the last six months is that I, these things get less and... And we talked about this with Star Wars, too. Mm-hmm. They get less and less special mm-hmm. once they they get laid out there mm-hmm. and 
I don't know how special they can be after the final Avengers movie. Yeah. And I don't know how special Star Wars can continue to be after the third film of this trilogy that they're kind of working on. Yeah. Um, and well, so I don't, I, you know, I don't know if it ends up being more kitschy, like when a Fast and Furious movie comes out, mm-hmm. or if it, or if they somehow find a way to reboot it. I, I think what I think first of all, I, Marvel has been so smart in every step they take mm-hmm. that, you know, obviously they have asked themselves the same question, you know. Sure. And I just, I trust them so much at this point to do whatever the right thing is to, to make it work. What if there is no right thing though? That, that could be, I mean, it's been 10 years and and 22 movies after Endgame. So like, cause Tony Stark, uh, Robert Downey Jr. Looms really, really large over the entire mm -hmm. thing. And I'm pretty sure that we know his contract is out after the, after this last Avengers movie. And he's also, you know, 55. I mean like, yeah, you know, I don't know. I you know they've restocked the roster pretty well. Yeah. Um, I, I trust. I just trust them. I trust that they will do whatever the smart thing is. I think they will. You know they've been building up to this Infinity War and, and Endgame for so long, like basically since Avengers, that like I think they'll be smart enough to scale back in scope and build toward the next thing. Yeah, Start laying you can, the seeds. You can almost get bigger by going with smaller stories. Yeah, yeah. Okay, that's 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 build anticipation for. Plus, you got to remember they're also they're about to get back to Fantastic Four and the X Men. Yeah. So like, and that that brings not just those franchises, but also some pretty major villains like Doctor Doom, Galactus, and, and, and a whole bunch more. So I defend the X Men series, mm-hmm. but there's no doubt in my mind that it'll be better. Yeah, when 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 it's encapsulated in the rest of the yeah, and if they're smart, they'll shelve it for about five years. Yeah, and just let it sleep. And I le- think we've got another one coming out. Yeah, it's the last one Jean that Grey. Fox made, and it looks just they've already first of all that they've already done this one. I know. <laughs> like it just looks so boring. I don't know. I I just you know how I feel about those X Men movies. But the I just Wolverine don't love them. movie was great. The Logan Logan, Logan. was really interesting. Sorry, thank yeah, it was good. That was good. Um, as far as Star Wars, like, um, I don't know. I, I, I don't know what's going to happen after. I still stand by the fact that I just really loved Rogue One mm-hmm. and the concept of doing Rogue One mm-hmm. and fitting it into the timeline. Yeah. I really loved that. And I Solo didn't do it for me at all. Solo was like a, one of the prequels. It was so like... I never want to do... I, know, I don't need to watch Solo ever again. No. So... I don't either. I, I oh god, I did not like that movie at all. But Rogue One was was good. I like the idea of what they're doing though with with giving the Games of Thrones guys like their own trilogy that's like has nothing to do with anything. Yeah, like do some interesting things with Star Wars. But I think that the the although I like Ray, Finn, Kylo Ren, I, I don't know what you do with them after this. Um, I don't either. I'm not sure. And they they're never they're they're not even close to rising to the Luke Leia. No, they're they're side characters. Maybe for maybe I don't. Well, you you have young kids. Do they? Mm-mm. No, it's not no. there. They love the movies, but um, it's not like they're. They've got so many other things, though. Yeah, I mean, my you know? kids are obsessed with Minecraft and Fortnite. Right, like we didn't have those things. No, like I mean, I had Doom, but I wasn't obsessed with the character in Doom, and they, I didn't care about Duke Nukem. Yeah, I mean, all those game, all those games that, that we grew up with, and you're a little bit younger than me, but they were pretty one dimensional. You yeah. know, whereas the kids today, they've got these deep storylines and like all these yeah. things happening, and, and well, Minecraft, they can build their own worlds. I was and, a, like, I was a geeky PC gamer mm-hmm. even back in those days with like. Doom and Hexen and all and but no, it just never rose. The only, to that the only one, my brother was really into the PC games. The only one I know he used to play something called Leisure Suit Larry, and like <laughs> I don't remember that one. <laughs> I tried to play it once and it was like totally over my head. I'm like I don't understand what I'm supposed to do. And it was like that soft R PG thirteen yeah, plus yeah, yeah. type. Like hey, we're gonna titillate you. Right, right, right. <laughs> with, with like pixelated boobs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Something I know. So yeah, but they've got all these intricate stories and characters in video games. That, like, yeah. We didn't. We didn't, plus they can play it with their friends and like yeah. all this stuff. It's like so I was. It's funny because uh, my kid know, went to a Fortnite birthday party where they all showed up with their Nintendo Switches and played together. <laughs> yeah. And why? Why not? Yeah. 
it's interesting this generation because like my so my stepdaughter is about to turn 16 this summer and she she's pretty ready to get her driver's license but so many of her friends just don't care mm-hmm. and i realize it's because they're all in touch with each other they've, all the they've time they fulfilled so much of what we know like they don't, when i was 16 it was freedom and and even if we didn't have any place to go we'd all drive to like a parking lot or somebody's house it was the only house. way to see your friends yeah we'd hang out yeah, yeah. but they could sit on the phone yeah but we got text chains right they're like together all the time yeah. like so they don't need they don't have that like need to like hop in the car and go see each other um yeah whatever good yeah. for them well anyway i'm happy we got a chance to talk about the movies yeah uh just quickly and mm-hmm. i know this is never quick with you yeah but is there anything upcoming that you're i mean obviously avengers and game i'll be there by the way infinity wars was so infinity war was so good that i I always forget that it's called Endgame. It's just Infinity War 2. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Which is what it was originally called when they announced it. Was it? Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. Um, uh, there's that. And honestly, the whole... Everything after that is like, I don't... I, that's all I care about. Although it's crazy because there's the other Star Wars movies coming this year, which we don't... Have, we haven't seen anything from it. No. Which is like... I would love... Since they have the opportunity right now, I know they won't, but it'd be really cool if they just didn't do anything. They just said, it's coming out on this day. Just show up. They don't even tell you the title. They tell you nothing. Yeah. They're just like Star Wars Episode Nine, December 15th, be there. <laughs> Make sure you buy some like bananas and oranges, which we have a branding deal with. <laughs> right. But they, they release no toys, nothing. Yeah. So like literally you just, I, I would be curious what the box office would be if they did that. That would be the same. Yeah, if not more. Yeah. Because people would be so curious, you know. Why haven't they released anything? <laughs> Is it a bomb? Right. Yeah, no, you're right. That would be cool. All right. Well, that's it. Thanks for for listening, everybody. Uh, We'll talk to you next time. It's been the waitingfornextyear.com podcast. Bye.